diseases of arteries or arterial diseases and what a post graduate has to know for an exit examination remember that that we will be talking exactly in the rest of the sessions like we will be discussing about some must know questions we will be talking about questions that you should know as a post graduate and finally you will be shown about questions that are exactly nice to know so these are exactly the pattern that we are going to follow today but before that whenever we start with this part uh, remember that that like blood like water what becomes very important is increased amount of water or less amount of water across various parts of the indian subcontinent and the rest of the world are very well known so if you compare water with the rest of the parts of the human body consider that blood if it is less is thus a state of a deficiency whereas a more blood is thus a state of a hypertrophy of an organ so that means this is an av malformation in which more blood is important that means majority of the discussions that we do are always to do with less blood to a limb remember the definitions that starts with includes ischemia infarction gangrene necrosis and a pre gangrene now what are exactly these things and what are the things that you should remember for this definition you should remember that ischemia is technically a state of a reversible event remember the important word in this context thus is reversible and you are required to remember in this part that the word ischemia stands for a reversible hypoxia to a cell now hypoxia is a cellular event whereas on the other hand infarction is an irreversible event where there is a cellular death which will translate to a macroscopic tissue death so ischemia like mesenteric ischemia and mesenteric infarction are not exactly the same term as a result of infarction remember that tissues will undergo into a macroscopic change which will be called as a gangrene which will be called as a gangrene which means that there will be a macroscopic change now gang sorry macroscopic is necrosis very sorry gangrene is necrosis with a super added two three fraction gangrene is a necrosis with a super added two three fraction now the last word is pre gangrene which means that is a state of impending necrosis or gangrene is a state of impending that means it is going to happen impending necrosis or gangrene and is marked by usually discoloration of the tissue but the tissue will remain warm with a normal circulation so remember that a less blood to a limb is defined by few definitions which you are expected to know as a examinee now what is important in this picture then is a state of an acute limb ischemia please remember is thus an event in which everything happens in a minute maybe that means if the limb was there with a normal circulation of blood in due to an artery suddenly an event may occur in which either a thrombosis happens or an embolus comes that means from this and finally it can be a trauma in which 
remember that there is a transaction so as surgeons please remember due to these effects the effects can be thus a pulse resistance a pallor paresthesia paralysis poikilothermia now the first one and the most important one is always pain so remember how many p's are there so in a patient of an acute limb ischemia please remember that these signs are the five p's now whenever you talk about a patient with an acute limb ischemia always remember if the examiner will ask you what are the things that you have asked as i have said three conditions thrombosis embolism trauma thrombosis embolism trauma so what was the onset particularly in relation with a trauma heart conditions like an atrial fibri and drugs are responsible and so is onset of pain in the limb so this condition believe me is something called as an acute limb ischemia now parallel to an acute limb ischemia a chronic limb ischemia is in which there is a gradual occlusion of the artery please remember there is a gradual occlusion of the artery with time that means when it started it was an atheroma which was blocking the lumen gradually the atheroma choked it completely so remember that a chronic limb ischemia thus to ask about is will always start with one single cardinal manifestation that means the pain will be manifested in relation with a muscle which will always be that means if you consider that this is a limb and if you consider that this is the artery that is going to the limb then remember that that always when the artery branches this is muscle 1 this is muscle 2 and this one is muscle 3 so if it is a muscle one that means a block of this region is going to be manifested by a pain at a proximal muscle hence if you have understood up to this so like if there is a block into this it will be the mid part muscle and definitely a block in this is a distal part now if you have understood up to this concept the rest of the picture becomes simpler in which you think about the aorta and the aorta has its branches which starts with the iliac the external iliac which becomes the common femoral the profunda femoris and thereafter the superficial femoral which goes to the popliteal to become into the popliteal trifurcation so we'll again repeat this is the aorta this is the common iliac internal iliac is given off okay so this is the external iliac this is the common femoral profunda femoris superficial femoral and thereafter you have the popliteal which will now divide into anterior tibial posterior tibial and finally peroneal and then remember posterior tibial will divide into a lateral plantar and a medial plantar whereas the anterior tibial will continue as arterial dorsalis pedis will join as an arch so now in this picture what is important is this is the internal iliac which will give arterial supply to the penis now in this picture remember that that if there is a choking or a block at the level of the iliac artery remember at the level of the iliac artery this will lead to an auto iliac atherosclerosis or this pain in the gluteal muscles because they are supplied by the internal iliac superior and inferior gluteal arteries and along with is complex of syndrome called as a lerich syndrome which remember is a supply to the penis with an erectile dysfunction common femoral and this are associated with pain in the thigh muscles whereas a block of the popliteal is associated with a calf or a gastrocnemius soleus cramp anterior tibial posterior tibial and remember are associated more or the less again with cramp in the leg 
whereas the medial and the lateral plantar is associated with a cramp in the foot okay so these are the points to remember and as we have said all depends upon what is the type of the pain okay. with this remember that if there is an decreased blood supply to one part you have to consider that there are other systems like the heart where there can be myocardial ischemia with angina pectoris brain with transient ischemic attack kidneys with signs of renal failure eye and genitals with amaurosis fugax and leeches so remember all is about a gradual occlusion so it can be manifested in the limb but the patient will die from heart and brain and kidney diseases you need to talk about ulcers and amputations what has been the sequence nicotine addiction in details particularly smoking and pack air index the risk factor that includes hereditary obesity again diet etc drugs that the patient has been taking and definitely this so when you are writing for an or you thinking for an exam all chronic limb ischemia this is the minimum that you are required to take the most and the first important thing is something called as claudication named after the roman emperor claudius where you are remember that the word claudication technically means a cramp like pain now if you remember this cramp like pain and with an mr scale okay interestingly enough remember that void classification is something that you are asked in your viva most commonly you should be able to say this as a must know topic everyone must know what is a boyd's grade of intermittent claudication grade 4 remember is rest pain there is nothing called as a grade 0 rather ford and fontines are something that you should know and if you take a screenshot of this page then remember i will be keeping it as a should know question that what are the other things you know vascular surgeons will usually use the rather ford and the fontine so remember that claudication like this gentleman you see has stopped walking and thus will be divided into a grade 3 after the history is done when you go for examination kindly write it under three headings general survey examination of the vascular system general and systemic examination this image has been taken from one among the famous textbooks of surgery and this what is important is in general survey do comment upon the patient in pain remember that uh, do comment upon the patient in severe amount of pain and associated with please do, do comment upon the position that this patient has taken in which he is sitting and holding his hands so remember also talk about the pain score which is usually 10 out of 10 and give the patient an analysis because he is screaming in pain beyond that you are going to take the others now how to write in an exam in an exam remember that whenever you are writing an examination of the vascular system rather than talking about uh, some conventional i have changed a little bit and in the lower limb kindly don't write auscultation and percussion inspection palpation i have told you the points footprint and gait is something that is new that you are learning today and if the patient has an, is an amputee then it is always important to talk about an amputation stump whereas in the upper limb remember the things are little bit different and you are required to know special tests for thoracic outlet obstruction special test for thoracic outlet obstruction now before you start the examination always see the patient's face may be puffy due to renal failure if the patient is a diabetic see the glucose drink insulin and the insulin syringe the patient position and exposure is this remember that all has to do about the arterial system and as you can see you can trace the arterial anatomy very very well on inspection and palpation now remember that for a case presentation i am combining these points 
so it is inspection and palpation remember always say that i have compared the thigh versus arm leg versus forearm so you can compare the normal side so if this is the abnormal side this is the normal limb remember that at all the points thigh leg forearm or arm if you want to remember remember the thigh versus leg look at the girth see the power of the muscle c for in skin changes c for subcutaneous tissue changes ulcer location and description when you see the foot and the hand do comment upon the number of fingers or the digits do comment upon ulcer we'll be having a topic on ulcer do comment upon nails movements of joints neurological examination and see now kindly see that that i have transgressed from the conventional teaching and i have combined inspection and palpation and those of you who will be appearing for your mrcs particularly examinations remember that or for your dnb in some centers you are required to say the summary of the case you cannot waste your time saying inspection findings in palpation and you cannot so please see the findings together thigh leg girth muscle cord skin change subcutaneous tissue digit ulcer nail joint from a neurological and gangrene in gangrene you are required to know the difference between a dry gangrene which has a line of demarcation is usually painless tissues are mummified or shriveled up whereas a wet gangrene where the line of demarcation is not well and it usually forms a blister in the tissue and is associated with crepitus due to gas and may have signs of sepsis when you talk about ulcers remember that first of all see surroundings for any changes see the margins which are well defined see the floor which contains an slough see the edge which is a sloping and will thus suggest that that this is a healing ulcer and the base will have an induration but is limited to the ulcer there are changes of pre gangrene very very well noted in this picture as i have said the limb is warm but there is a dusky cyanotic hue if you compare fingers in which as i have said there is atrophy of the pulp but that is very well noticed into this picture so please remember that ulcers are to be described arterial ulcers are seen on the dorsum and the lateral aspect of the foot so always remember that, that arterial ulcers are seen on the dorsum and the lateral aspect of foot venous ulcers are seen on the medial aspect neuropathic on the plantar aspect comes to the next important part which many people give it very very important palpation of the arteries needs to be made with a legend and what are you doing remember that upper limb and lower limb you need to talk about what are the arteries now this is uh, my hands palpating the dorsalis pedis what is important in this is remember that that uh, the left hand is resisting the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus as you can see in the picture that th the thing that becomes lateral to this is the arteria dorsalis pedis you are not going to trace the artery beyond the base of the metatarsal and remember the artery is palpated on the intermediate cuneiform the talus and the base of the metatarsal this becomes an important valve question lateral to the intermedial lateral to the tendon below the intermedial line on the cuneiform talus base of metatarsal you are not going to go in the first metatarsal space anterior tibial artery is more or less the same except that you are above the intermedial line the posterior tibial artery see that the leg is rotated outwards and remember you are required to find two bony points the medial malleolus of the tibia and the insertion of the calcaneum and remember that you are required to find the bone and the artery right hand palpates the artery the peroneal artery is really the scene is on the lateral aspect of so the leg is internally rotated at the hip joint the knee is extended and remember you feel the peroneal behind the fibula the popliteal artery by the first and the most classic technique 
is remember is palpable feebly and what you are required to remember is if you get it easily means that there is already an aneurysm so this is the classical method the knee is at a 60 degree flexion another method which acts somewhat as a screening is called as a cross leg test or a fuschig's test which is very interesting with examiners and remember that that if the popliteal artery is patent this limb will have a pulsation whereas the best method again taken from one of the famous methods of surgery books is in which you palpate not with the right but with the left hand the leg the patient is prone and you feel in the intermalleolar fossa or sorry the intercondylar fossa of the femur so if that was the tibia that you are palpating against this is the femur that you are palpating against common femoral is about 1 and 1/2 inch below the mid inguinal point between symphysis pubis and the anterior superior iliac spine radial artery palpation is a very standard one remember that the left hand supports and the right hand palpates so this is what you are required to remember the hand is in a mid prone now what is important is see that the ulnar artery please remember that that there is now what is important in this is that that the ulnar artery remember there is a small again a uh, thing to remember is that that the ulnar artery is palpated on this aspect so this is not the ulnar artery okay so mind it this will be on the medial aspect that you will find the bone called as the pisiform and remember that you will find it just radial to the pisiform so if my finger is pointing at the radial artery this artery is the ulnar artery okay so the right hand is going to palpate the radial first confirms and then it moves to the opposite side to feel the ulnar what is the status of the hand hyper extension at the wrist now brachial artery is a simple one in which you feel it medial to the tendon of the biceps whereas remember that axillary artery is like palpating the axillary lymph nodes in the uh, axilla in the breast cancer what is important is that that the examiner will stand on the side carotid artery is at the upper border of the thyroid cartilage and the superficial temporal is 1 cm in front and 1 cm superior to the tragus so now after you have done all the methods now let us come to how to give a diagnosis into this case and then we'll talk about some special test okay now when you talk about a diagnosis remember that as i have said all the special test majority students are stuck exactly at this point so my diagnosis is a 65 year old gentleman with a chronic limb ischemia affected by or due to atherosclerosis okay ischemia of unilateral or bilateral lower limb and due to atherosclerosis and finally with evidences of a critical limb ischemia evidences of a critical limb ischemia or if you are not happy with the word you can use complicated by an ulcer or a digital gangrene an ulcer or a digital gangrene so it is complicated by an ulcer or a digital gangrene so 65 year old gentleman chronic limb ischemia atherosclerosis critical limb ischemia into this that means in the similar picture you can make a 45 year old gentleman long term smoker or consumption of tobacco chronic limb ischemia cli due to or unilateral or bilateral probably due to a burchers disease we have not finished complicated by an ulcer or a digital gangrene 
So remember that this is exactly the way it is said during an exam. So what is your diagnosis? 45 year old gentleman, smoker, CLI, Burgess disease, ulcer with a digital gangrene. The minute we speak of the word for Burgess disease, the minute examiners will ask you what is Burgess disease? How did you diagnose? Sir, there are the most famous of the many criteria is a Shio nose criteria. Out of all of these, Shio nose criteria is the most famous. There are other criteria also. So if you are interested, learn this, which I feel is redundant. For me, Shio nose criteria is what I require. So what are the five things that should be obeyed? Smoking or tobacco onset before the 50 years of age. That does not mean that you will not get a 52 year old man. Yes, you will get a 52 year old man. Okay. And remember that he started the disease at the age of 45. Infrapopliteal arterial occlusion. Very important. That means we are talking of middle sized vessels and small sized vessels. Upper limb involvement. Both radial and ulna which are intermediate size. Phlebitis migrans means migratory thrombophlebitis and other factors like diabetes has to be ruled out in before we diagnose a merger. Hence there is a big group of examiners who are still now questioning how could you diagnose merger if you did not know the history of this. That means if the patient has a diabetes <coughs> sorry, if the patient has a diabetes you are not going to talk of a budget. Now, few things that go <coughs> in the picture that includes Burgess test, which includes elevating the limb at an angle and observing for signs of pallor and appearance of pain when you ask the patient to do an exercise. The angle that which it appears is called as the Burgess angle. The angle that which it appears is called as the Burgess angle. And remember that for doing this test, you tell the patient to keep the legs up, make it flat, and then again keep the leg down. Remember that the time that it takes for the blood to return back is called as a capillary filling, not refilling, please. Refilling is the one in which you pinch in the pulp or in the nail and that is called as a capillary refilling okay so you have to see both but remember but this test talks about the angle other things that you are required to know is burger's position where the patient may lie like this okay somewhat number two burger's exercise where you tell the patient to intermittently sit up and do his movements with the legs and fingers. Now, we come to the near end of the topic with an amputation. Remember that amputation stumps are special to be given in one round. You have signs of arterial ulcer, limb ischemia. The amputation stump may have healed well, may not have healed well. You are required to know about the details about below knee amputation. Remember, signs amputation, foot amputations, Particularly, remember something called as a ray amputation of a foot. Okay, right. Now, the next part is in upper limb, Allen's test is always important to see radial and ulnar. Thoracic outer obstruction is seen by Addison, Ruse, and hyperabduction, which are sometimes required to do. Now, before you end up, it is good to measure something called as an ABPI and say to the examiner, they are said to complement my exam. I will require to measure the ABPI in this patient. The examiner will ask you because you remember that you need a handheld Doppler which will measure both the brachial artery pressure and the ankle pressure and then quantify this. Pet question, what is 0.5 to 0.8 is moderate disease? Less than 0.5 is technically called as a critical limb ischemia and less than 0.3 is remembered is always about an impending need for an amputation. So this completes your topic about 
now so this completes your topic about what is your diagnosis you can add the word abpi in right lower limb left lower limb in this topic so the abpi in the right lower limb and the left lower limb is in this topic finally the examiners will ask you what is your treatment plan or management plan for this patient now when you talk about treatment remember the first issue is always the emergency management now when you talk about the emergency management emergency management is pain and emergency management is a gangrene always remember that pain and gangrene if the gangrene is wet this will require an amputation or will require a debridement whereas if the gangrene is dry maybe you may consider an observation also if it is an elective background remember if it is an elective background then remember then that means a patient is an emergency so the elective background the number one thing is to confirm the level of occlusion by doing a color doppler by doing a color doppler ultrasound in a b mode now a color doppler ultrasound in a b mode remember will now show you the level of block by talking about a triphasic a biphasic and a monophasic and remember that we see the difference between tri and bi then it will show you what is the approximate site of occlusion so it tells you the site but what it cannot tell you is something called as the effect of the vessel distal to this called as a distal run off so this is something that a color doppler cannot tell you based on this remember then send the patient for host of investigations that includes sugar urea creatinine that includes a lipid profile and in rare cases you need other special tests but these are bare minimum if this is the bare minimum sir then now confirm the urea and the creatinine now if the urea and the creatinine remember is normal then think about a ct ngo it is abnormal think about an mr ngo which one is good sir depends but ct ngo probably gives a more better anatomical image now based on the ct ngo and the mr ngo you now decide on two major important factors one what is the level of block number two what is the length of block number three what is the status of collateral number 4 what is the status of collateral and lastly what is the event of distal run off that means are the distal arteries at all patent or not so now the simplistic answer to the examiner's query are if it is a short segment disease you should consider endoluminal treatments whereas if it is a long segment disease you should consider a bypass which can be anatomical and non anatomical usually we go for anatomical that means the proximal artery and the distal artery the proximal artery and the distal artery so this completes the story about urea creatinine and the story now while the patient is doing this remember the patient is given a next big group of changes something called as lifestyle modification which includes factors like number 1 diet 
number 2 drugs like aspirin and clopidogrel and pentoxifiline number 3 talk about bad habits like addictions which need to be stopped number 4 is exercise like brisk walking which promotes collaterals so diet drugs addiction and exercise along with lifestyle modification so this completes the elective manifestation into this okay now finally let the examiner now talk about do you know of any objective way to classify that is called as a trans atlantic society classification this remember is what a vascular surgeon will do before he takes a decision into what is what finally when we end burger's disease remember is an autoimmune disease and comes in a spectrum as a vasculitis the many to talk about this that means that there is no cure in this autoimmune disease but yes as a pain relief procedure people have tried something called as lumbar sympathectomy where you cut the ganglion on both the sides that means that if this is the vertebrae if this is the aorta and if this is the inferior vena cava the only examination question is on the right the ganglion is behind the inferior vena cava with the presence of the lumbar vein in front and which usually tears off whereas on the left remember it is just lateral to the aorta so the left side is operated first because it becomes easier right side is a difficult operation because it is located behind the vena cava on one side you remove l1 l2 l3 l4 to promote ejaculation okay you do something called as l2 l3 l4 on another side people say that lumbar sympathectomy helps but remember it is only a temporary event other factors that help in ulcer healing other factors that help in ulcer healing will be number 1 something called omentoplasty something called omentoplasty okay so the first factor is so you need omentoplasty okay number 2 there are other maneuvers like ilizaro fixation with transverse not longitudinal transverse distraction so these are the procedures that you are required to remember there are many other logic things that goes around and this is a very brief summary of what is your approach to as a post graduate student into the management these are the must know questions that we have talked remember that many of the questions have been which you should know and this is exactly what examiners will like lumbar sympathectomy does not have a role in an atherosclerotic disease for a pain relief this is this common questions that are asked in examination from your theory marks are what is rest pain how do you define it by fontaine's definition what is a critical limb ischemia okay and then examiners will ask you what are the revascularization option something that i have told you endoluminal like stents etc and as well as open surgery and more or the rest so this completes your long or your case discussion in vascular surgery on arterial disease for just in a minute we will go back to the methods of palpation of the arteries because these are the ones that are commonly asked by students remember that in the lower limb what you are always required to remember is arteria dorsal is pedis leg is neutral our anterior tibial leg is neutral externally rotated in posterior tibial internally in peroneal flexed in popliteal classical prone in best method femoral is supine radial artery is mid prone ulnar is extended biceps is and antecubital with semi flex so this completes all your methods that you are required to know along with revascularization options into believe me these are the basics which the examiner would like to ask you 
with this. So with this, thank you very much. We'll be taking your questions as they come in an vascular disease. Thank you.